The statistics questions are probably the most unfamiliar for non-maths specialists. These involve interpreting tables of figures and understanding graphs and charts, usually about pupil performance. The data section, um, the analysing the graphs, medians, um, averages, I, I needed help, I needed revision on all of it really. There was asking for information and data about graphs, or was it scattered diagrams, and, and I can't even remember covering those at GCC like 15 years ago. Things like the box and whisker diagrams, I don't think I've ever used one, I can't mm. imagine ever using one again, but it's just <laughs> remembering what to do and knowing how to do it. You might ask why you need to know any of this, but it's important to be able to interpret this kind of information as it's about actual pupils and their real achievements. The general strategy for the statistics questions is to try to see the drama behind the data. Here's a question about a table of figures. Or you might be shown a bar chart or the question may be about a pie chart which has sections in it. In each case, it's for you to work out what the table, chart or graph is telling you. So, let's look at a question on a scatter graph and see what it says. To inform her choice of reading materials, a primary teacher looked at the spread of reading ages in her class. The scatter graph shows the actual age and the reading age of 21 pupils in the class. What proportion of the class have the same reading age as their actual age? Give your answer as a decimal to one decimal place. Now, some of the techniques we're going to discuss will be helpful to you in other questions. If we look at the scatter graph, the first thing to realise is what the axes are telling us. So on the x-axis we have the actual age in years and months. So when you look at the division between the numbers you'll see there are 12 minor lines, each one representing a month. And the reading age is on the vertical axis also with 12 minor lines. So if we look at a point on the scatter graph and it's an actual person we can see, if we look at that point, that the actual age is five years and nine months and the reading age is six years and five months. So, we need to know the number of pupils who have the same reading age as actual age. Let's look for one. Ah, here's one. Its actual age is six years and one month and its reading age is six years and one month. And here's another one. These are all connected on the same line. This diagonal line shows all the pupils who have the same reading age as actual age. So let's count the number of pupils on the line. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six pupils with the same reading age as actual age. But this is not the answer. Let's look at the question. It says, what proportion of the class have the same reading age as their actual age? So we now need to know how many pupils there are in the class as a whole. What do we do? Do we count up all the points on the scatter graph? Maybe we should read the question again at this point. It says, the scatter graph shows the actual age and reading age of 21 pupils in the class. So we're being told there's 21 pupils in the class. So there we have it. There are six pupils who have the same actual age as reading age and there are 21 pupils in the class. So for the proportion, we have to calculate 6 out of 21. But the question says, give your answer as a decimal to one decimal place. That means the 6 out of 21 has to be calculated as a decimal. So we need the calculator and we need to have 6 divided by 21. Then we get an answer. In this case we need to round it up to the nearest one decimal point and that means our answer is 0.3 and we then put that into the place on the screen and we move on to the next question. 
it says click on the pupil who has the greatest difference between their reading age and their actual age. The diagonal line shows us those pupils who have the same reading age and actual age. So if we could move that diagonal line up away from where it sits, the furthest point that it touches would be the pupil who had the greatest difference between their reading age and their actual age. You can't do this on the screen, but it gives you an imaginary way of achieving this. So, the person who is the furthest away from the diagonal line, in my looking at it, is this one. And we click on that one to show the answer. Now you can see it's changed colour. However, if you change your mind, you can choose another option just by clicking on it. However, I have chosen that one, and that's my answer to the question. Remember, in this section you can leave a question unfinished to go on to the next, and then go back to it later. So it's a good idea to allow about two minutes for each question, and then move on. In these questions, we have looked at several useful techniques which may help you with other questions. And there are more statistic questions on the TDA website which you can practice with.